Gutter Trash is a proud member of the Comics Podcast Network. After the death of her parents, young Jeliza Rose escapes into a fantasy world while isolated in the prairies of Texas. With only the severed heads of dolls for companionship, she runs afoul of a mysterious and wicked woman named Dale, and bonds with Dale's mentally challenged brother Dickens in Terry Gilliam's unsettling Tideland. Trash episode 81. Tideland. My name is Eric. And my name is Jason. How's it going? Excellent. Yeah. Uh, Still alive or something? <laughs> no. 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 Got no. Got the sniffles. Uh, allergies. I have had you. allergies. Uh, I have uh, had allergies. They've been there and now they're still here. Yeah. Well, they. They very rarely go away. I know. I had the allergy test. The uh, uh, skin perk thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I've had that numerous, numerous times. You laid on your belly and felt a hundred pricks. Uh. Well. <laughs> yeah. Enter you. Yeah. 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 Blood. Lots of blood. Very uncomfortable. You found out things about yourself. I do. <laughs> From the procedure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had that test done uh, years and years ago, and because uh, I, I was always sneezing, and we had just gotten a cat, m- my mom's first kitty cat, and uh, uh, I thought maybe I was allergic to the cat, but then I found out, nope, I was just allergic to trees. <laughs> so they basically said, you know, <clears throat> don't you know, don't go outside. Right. Yeah. And you'll be okay. I um I uh I was always uh having asthma attacks and vomiting and very uh sickly when I was uh, a kid. And I had the test done and found out I was allergic to everything. Everything. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it was Don't the... go outside, don't stay indoors. <laughs> what was it? Don't be near near animals. <laughs> Don't eat things. There's some. I was just reading something or watching something where someone thought the same thing happened to them, but they found out they were just allergic to the uh, the metal in the uh, you know the, 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 the tester tips, the tips. Yeah. Wow. What, what was that? I can't remember. Something I just saw or read, but huh. I thought that was funny. Yeah. Maybe that was your thing too. Maybe. It seems uh, a little bit like we're talking about two different things. Maybe we usually are. Well, because uh, when I was tested for allergies. Uh, they would uh, take, uh, there was a series of hypodermic needles. Mm-hmm. Uh, they would uh, inject the allergen and uh, individually just sort of Trick scrape. Them. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but then I know that there's the other way where they just have like a tray and they just kind of set it on you and then uh, tap oh, it like the you. whole thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, mine was individually. Like, okay, cause it was all like, right, they, all right. I was, it was on my back though. Uh, I, I imagine a periodic table of allergens and they're just poking one by one. I had them all on my arms. Uh, they did both arms. Wow. Uh, when I was older, I had it done uh, while I was on my back, and that was the the tray method. Oh, yeah. Uh, where I guess like each it was it's like like a, an ice cube tray, only with uh, sharp points at the yeah. bottom, <laughs> like the evil ice, like the the uh, Clive Barker ice cube tray. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. So you were laying on your belly or on your back? I was laying on my on my stomach. Okay. Yeah. And, that's uh, all right. Yeah. They they like would set the tray like on the section of my back. Tap it down. See, that makes more sense than the one by one. Yeah, it was uh, uh, far less uh, stressful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See that, and you can probably have allergic reactions from being stressed out too. Like, yeah, you know, you can get hives and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, you know, when when you're five years old and. Uh, you just see, you know, a hundred hypodermic needles sitting out in front of you <laughs> as the doctor doesn't. 
you know, it's like when they stick in the needle, like that that's nothing. But when they like fucking dig into your skin and then like pull it out. Right. Oh man. It's like a, yeah, it's like a scrape, like you said. They just Yeah. Not fun. Not don't ever have it done or don't do it to your kids because then you just find out they're allergic to trees or right. some bullshit that they can't escape. So. Or the metal in the needle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah or the metal in the needle. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling full. I'm feeling How full. could you? You ate one ravioli per every ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I ate about a third of it, and then like halfway through the movie, I was like, I'm gonna eat some more. <laughs> and then it was like all cold. Like the mushrooms were like ice cold. <laughs> but it's still all right. You know, I own a microwave. I know. Okay. I didn't want to disrupt right. the. Uh, I kept, like it was so dark in there because we all we were we just had the you know the light of the the screen. Right. That was it. I was just eating it in the dark. I couldn't even tell. I was like, is this a piece of ravioli or a mushroom? <laughs> I'm gonna eat it. No, I, like, I don't know what this is. But, yeah, you could have turned on the light. You were right next to it. I didn't want to disrupt the the, the mood. <laughs> all right. Huh? I mean, like in the middle of the theater, you're like, does this popcorn have butter on it? And then you like clap your hands and the lights come on. Everybody's like, damn it. Uh, it's uh, it's a little bit different. Yeah, a little, uh, little, you know, little different. Yeah, this is a this is a safe place. Really, an abode. An abode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I do feel safe here. Usually, usually. Yeah. Now I hear your crazy neighbors. Oh yeah. Not right have now. A, they have a death wish for you. And <laughs> I, I'm collateral damage at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little spooky. Ah. Uh, what about? It? Oh, oh no, go ahead. I was going to say, my allergies, I think, what kicked them up. I was outside today. Uh, Went to a little graduation party thing. Indoors. My friend Tracy. There's usually indoors. Usually. But everything's crazy at a pharmaceutical graduation party. We No, we were outside, and I played cornhole for the first time in my life. Really? Yeah. Well, I can't really say anything. I've never played it. Really? I've seen the uh, the arcade game at the bowling alley. <laughs> that, that's bizarre. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's a little bizarre. But, yeah, me and Kathleen were on a team. Neither one of us had ever played, and we played against my friend Michelle and her brother, Mark. Oh. And they destroyed us 21 to 5. It's pretty well, bad. We never played. We never played. They were, I would say... Ringers, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they weren't bad. They are pro cornholers. Uh-huh. <laughs> I bet th- their pillows are full of beans. They just sleep at night, and they toss them around the room. <laughs> No, the furniture is just bean bags. Yeah. Uh, bean bag chairs, yeah. yeah, they, yeah. They, eat, they eat a lot of burritos. Yeah. Um, yep. Crazy stuff. Live, eat, sleep, beans. It's the magical fruit. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah, then, uh, like an idiot, you rode your bike here today. I did ride my bike here, but it's like the second time I've ridden my bike this year. It's pretty pathetic. Uh, it seems to me like you've ridden some... I think the only other time... I th- I'm pretty sure the only other time I rode my bike down to the post office at, like, 10 p.m. on April 15th to mail my taxes in. That was... Cause I would, and I only rode it then because I was afraid that the the line of cars would be ridiculous and I could weep through them on my bike. Right, right. On my bike. But, yeah. It's hilarious. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. So I want, I, want, I want to ride my bike some more. I want to ride it. I want to pedal. Pedal to the metal, as they say. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. 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 And uh, and yourself, you had a good day. No cornholing, but no cornholing. <clears throat> Fun times. Uh, played some video games. <sighs> Work on some artwork. <laughs> Those are good things. It's a good leisurely Sunday. Up to like one. Yeah, fitting within the theme. Watched. Uh, no, I didn't watch a movie. Although there was a movie on that was on while I was working on some artwork that had uh, Jason Bateman in it. Yeah, yeah. 
called Moving Target. Really? Yeah. And you're in the Jason Bateman fix, aren't you? Uh, not intentional. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to tell the Teen Wolf 2 story, because you said the same thing you like drew while you watched quote, uh, quotes. Watched yesterday, uh, I was uh, spent pretty much all afternoon uh, working on artwork, and uh, uh, I, I watched uh, Teen Wolf 2 yeah, with uh, Jason Bateman. <laughs> And uh, then today, I just happened to be, uh, I just uh, turned on the TV, and it just happened to be a Jason Bateman movie on. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're not, you didn't seek it out. I didn't seek it out. Uh, I certainly didn't pay attention to much of it. Uh, it was in the 80s, so, you know, it was, was him riding high on uh, the Hogan family. And, oh, wow, yeah. yeah. But, uh... Sandy Duncan. <laughs> He uh, he was a, a teenage musician who uh, went uh, went away for the summer to, to uh, travel with his band, and when he returned home, his family was gone, and he became a target, a human target, a moving target, moving, target, which yeah. was the name. Of, yeah. Of the- <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's <clears throat> scary. That's every child's nightmare. You come home from school and your house is just gone. Yeah. Oh, his house was there. Right. Right. The people who lived there weren't. No, right, right, right. right. <laughs> mm. Too bad for Jason Bateman. Indeed. How did he how did he come how did he, you know, come to terms with that? Uh he drank a lot, he did some drugs, and then he uh disappeared for a while and then he made a rest of development and things turned a bit the better for him. This was a biographical movie. Then. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Based on a true story. Uh, if you're asking about the specific movie that I, that was on, uh, I believe I already said I was not paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all I know is at the end, Tom Skerritt came back and it was all good. I love Tom Skerritt. Was he old Tom Skerritt or young Tom Skerritt? Uh, Tom Skerritt doesn't age. Yeah. <laughs> it was a trick question. <laughs> He gets different haircuts to try to fool you. Yeah, yeah. But no. I don't know if I talked about it here on the show, but I watched uh, MASH, the movie, mm-hmm. uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, Tom Skerritt is in that. And Tom Skerritt looks uh, way older than he has ever looked in any other movie that he's ever been in. And that was made well before any other movie that I would know him in. <laughs> it was made before the MASH TV series, right? Well, yeah. Which, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just to put in context, that was a long time ago. Yeah. (laughs) Tom Skerritt wasn't in the TV show. Well, that's what I'm saying. Right. Just to give people an an idea of how old this film is. Uh, It predates the the TV series. Of course it does, because it's the movie. All right. Well, they make movies after the series sometimes. (laughs) Not back then. (laughs) <laughs> we got young kids to listen to this show. They've never even seen a TV before. It's all, it's all radio, alarm clock, wristwatch, internet headbands. Right. But I was gonna say, if you wanted to, you know, play this game properly, uh-huh. like uh, Mash was made well before Alien was, mm-hmm. and uh, he looks uh, about twenty years younger in Alien than than he does in the Mash movie. It's a haircut. He tries to fool you. Yeah. Uh, he also didn't have a mustache in MASH. Right. Which, for some reason, apparently makes him look really old. When he shaves. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Strange. W- when he has the mustache, he looks yeah, exactly. 20 years younger. Maybe we should... Although, hold. did he have a mustache in Alien? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's your favorite movie, I figured. It is. Oh, so, <laughs> I love it. His name was Dallas. He was one of the seven <laughs> crew of the Nostromo. <laughs> They're, uh... Their course was returned to Earth. Their cargo was 20 million tons of mineral ore refinery processing. <laughs> it's a good film. Check it out. Um, but uh, I love Tom Skerritt. Uh, I think he's great. Contact. Contact. He, he was good in Contact. Three, two, one. Uh, Michael McConaughey. Uh, um, what did I say? Michael. Oh, yeah. Matt, Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Well, he played a Michael once. Okay, I'm sure he did. <laughs> he, um, Sorry, Joe. No, Through Joe and Contact, that's, that's all I got. <laughs> PBS show. I never never even heard of this. Oh, this is a show that uh, we used to be forced to watch in school. And Tom Scare was on it? No. Oh. You said Contact. The only uh, thing I know is uh, 3 Contact. Okay. <clears throat> 
which is a show that I was forced to watch in school. In school, really. Right. And uh, I've never seen the movie Contact, because uh, I don't like bullshit. <laughs> oh, I, I might pick it. So- oh, no, you'd be doing it. Okay. Oh, I liked it. I thought it was a good film. I don't watch movies with lesbians in it. Right. Right. Unless they're porno movies. Mm, of course. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you do watch movies with <laughs> girls kissing mentally handicapped people. Uh, I love creepy pedophilia. I don't know that I've uh, ever confessed this before, but here it is, folks. I love creepy pedophilia. And when you say that, let me cl- <laughs> let me clarify. <laughs> You're talking in literature and art. Oh, of course, of yeah, course. Not yeah. like in your. Not in my kitchen. Right, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, mostly because I'm not creepy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> His pedophilia is right down the middle, folks. <laughs> Nothing weird and off kilter about that. He plays by the rules. <laughs> he just gets a van, paints the windows black. <laughs> Nothing weird there. Ah. Uh. Folks, we're talking about Tideland today. Yeah. Terry Gilliam, the little girl from Silent Hill. Jeff Bridges' corpse. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> oh. That was something. <laughs> the Jeff Bridges thing? Yeah. First yeah. of all, like until you mentioned it last time, I didn't even know that he was in the movie. Right. And I was like, oh, what an added bonus. Yeah, yeah. And then that happened. <laughs> <laughs> and two-thirds of the movie, he's a, a rotting corpse. Yeah. And it gets worse. <laughs> oh, oh, it gets so much worse. <laughs> Oh my gosh, does it get worse? <laughs> you said, and you said the other day, you're like, well, prepare to cry. I thought you meant like, oh, does something touching or, you know, no. sad happen? <laughs> sad. And so creepy. So creepy. You're, you know what this movie reminds me of? This movie is if Harmony Kareen went out to an all you can eat Indian buffet and ate way too much. And he got some sort of weird virus and went home and was vomiting all over himself. And he fell asleep watching the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is what he would dream. (laughs) It's that sort of dark and creepy and odd. Uh, I'm glad that you brought up the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. (laughs) Because, wow, is this movie like the lighthearted cousin of... (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Did not expect that at all. <laughs> Ow. I expected something like maybe along the lines of the Fisher King. Maybe just because of Jeff Bridges was in there. I don't know. Right. Or like uh, maybe Baron Pan- Munchausen. Yeah, maybe like a little uh, Pan- uh, Pan's Labyrinth. Maybe a little like right, a, right, you know, right. like a fantasy and a gr- little kid. And- it, it does follow along with the the sort of this trend that seems to be happening now of. Uh, Precocious little girls in fantasy worlds. Yeah, yeah. That, what does that it? appear to be in movies a lot lately? It's a, it's a fad. Yeah, but uh, uh, man, this is like the 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 twisted cousin of all of them. Yeah, yeah. This one, this one's not a just a replica of of ten other films like that that no. you've seen. Uh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, even uh, yeah, even Pan's Labyrinth is is uh. Is a knee slapper compared to this? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's there were some moments I was genuinely unsettled watching this movie. Uh huh. <laughs> it's it's a good way to to phrase that. Yeah, yeah. But it was still, I mean, beautifully shot. Oh yeah. Uh, interesting characters. Story was uh, yeah. Story was good. Yeah. Um. All yeah. these positive things. Still don't know if I liked it. <laughs> it, it is kind of one of those movies. Uh, my second time saying it, uh, liked it a little bit less than I did the first time. Uh, even though I was fully prepared for, for the <laughs> creepiness. 
Uh, although, I, I will admit, I forgot quite a bit of it. Yeah. So some of it was still sort of unsettling. Right. Because there's so much of it. Yeah. How can yeah. you retain all that? <clears throat> it's true. Ah, oh, damn it. Um, forgot where I was going with that. Uh, this is your second <laughs> time watching it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah... Not as good as um, I remembered it. Still, mm-hmm. I still enjoyed it. I mean, as much as one can enjoy something like this. Yeah, it, <clears throat> it definitely leaves me with the idea that I'd like to see it a second time. Especially, I think early on in the movie, like on the second watching, I would have subtitles on because right. some of the some of the accents are yeah, yeah. or like or they're just kind of like blah, blah, blah. they're yeah, mumbling yeah. and like they're all drunk and high and mumbling and like maybe it's not really. Important, important or, but, or, but I felt like I missed some of the dialogue. Uh, you know, almost at uh, the beginning, like, like the very beginning, before any images were on screen, there was already talking. Yeah. Like, I couldn't understand anything. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, maybe I should turn subtitles on. Well, I missed, yeah, I missed, like, the first couple lines, because I was, I don't know. Like, well, you were also talking. Yeah, 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 I was, like, making fun of something, I forget. Yeah. And then, and I was like, oh, this shit, this is the movie. <laughs> And it opens beautifully with that, like, yeah. blue-tinted, like, uh, wheat grass or whatever. Yeah, not, yeah. A wheat field or whatever. It was, it was like un- it was like typical Terry Gilliam where you're not really sure what you're looking at for right. a minute. And, uh, like, it almost <clears throat> like it was underwater. And then, and actually, yeah, like, he kind of didn't really give you an establishing shot for a bit, which, yeah. you know, another... Throws you off, yeah. Yeah, I mean, unsettling in its own way. Not right. quite, not quite like the later unsettling, but <clears throat> and then uh, 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 yeah, I'll get back to that. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, you know what? Yeah, never mind. I'm uh, <laughs> what the unsettling thing? You don't want to talk about that? Uh, no, no, I'll, I'll totally talk about the unsettling thing. Mm-hmm. I just uh, I, I thought I had somewhere I was gonna. Head to uh, uh, no. Lost my way. You're you're just like uh, uh, Jason Bateman and Moving Target. Yes, thought, I thought he was on his way home. <laughs> <laughs> um, the beginning of the movie. Uh, you mentioned that you know it starts out with the the, the wheat field, and then uh, there's the scene of of the main character, Jeliza Rose. Uh, playing with her uh, creepy fucking doll heads yeah. uh, in a uh, crashed bus. Uh, Which is an awesome image. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then it cuts almost immediately to like a rock club. Yeah. <clears throat> the first time I saw it, like I was under the impression like uh, Jeff Bridges was the uh, the singer of that yeah, band. Yeah, I, t- I still thought that until just this moment. Okay. It was not? Well, he had different facial hair. Yeah, yeah. And because huh. because uh, the the guy singing had the uh, like like the Fu Manchu mustache, mm-hmm. whereas uh, throughout the movie uh, Jeff Bridges has you know like a scruffy uh, Jeff Bridges goatee. Yeah, I wonder if maybe like that's supposed to be like weeks later and he's grown it out. I don't, maybe, know. I don't know. But yeah, like, like his younger glory days. I couldn't quite tell if that was him or not. Right. But I, but I get the. Yeah, I got the feeling that it was. Maybe, like you said, I didn't think of that. Maybe it was supposed to be, like, years before right. instead of, like, you know, days before. Because, <clears throat> uh, I mean, it doesn't really have anything else to do with the story yeah. at all. So, yeah. Which, and which, and that, that is one thing that, like, I totally respect Terry Gilliam's, like, kind of quirky, abstract style. Right. But that happens a lot in his movies for me where there's a scene I'm like I don't even know if that's like super important or if that's just like uh, him you know painting a picture of the atmosphere you know I don't like is that is that the same character because they're shrouded in this blanket or whatever like you know he he does sort of have this uh, ambiguous uh, you know style that sort of leaves you I don't know kind of confused sometimes yeah yeah. but but I, I still think he's great I think he's awesome oh yeah I'll, I'll pretty much watch anything he does. Yeah, once yeah. I know he's directing something, I'd, I'd watch it. Yeah. I think there's there's very few movies of his that I've uh, disliked. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, I can only think of Brazil right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I liked Brazil for the most part. I thought it was way too long, and it was kind of boring. But I liked the characters and the story, but 
It's just a little, little too much, a little too. I don't know. Overindulgent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very good word for it. <clears throat> uh, I think I can agree with that. But uh, I thought it was super boring and way, way too long. Yeah. And I probably didn't even see the director's cut even. Yet. Oh yeah, I did once. <clears throat> it, was, it was insane. Yeah. I think that was when I realized, like, I'd seen it before, and I was like, well, I kind of like that. Maybe I'll watch the director's cut and see how different it is, and I watched it, and I was like, right. man, this is even slower and more boring. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It, it seems like some of his best movies are ones where he's more reined in, you know, but uh, at the same time, like, you hear about, like, you know, the struggles that he went through trying to make Brazil, or, like, uh, the Don Juan. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, Don Quixote. Or Don Quixote, sorry. Yeah. sorry. Uh, you know, and, like, oh, man, you know, I just feel bad for Terry Gilliam, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, like, you know, like, I want to I want to help him, you know, so, like, you know, like, the only thing I can do is watch these movies, but, like, you know, maybe, maybe they might suck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but at least it's a like even if one of his movies does suck, you know it's gonna be a different kind of suck, not like sure, sure. not like the same old suck you've seen a hundred times. Right. It's not gonna be Michael Bay suck. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's it's gonna be a unique experience kind of suck. Exactly. That uh yeah, yeah, I think even his worst movie uh would, would be better than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's high praise. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Tide Land. Tide Land. Do you like talking about the creepy? Yeah. Why yeah. don't you start it out? Uh, well, of course, uh, we've already spoiled. Uh, Jeff Bridges uh, is uh, the, the father of uh, young Jeliza Rose. <laughs> Dies within ten minutes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, you know, she just hangs around his corpse for half of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Creepy. Uh, his creepy neighbors who've lost eyes and, uh, her mentally, uh, I don't know if, uh, was he, uh, originally retarded or is he retarded because of the uh, scissors? his head injury? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think they, like, cut part of his brain out because yeah. they try to get rid of his seizures. And yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if he was always retarded. Right. But he's basically like a 30-year-old man with the mind of like a 10-year-old boy. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, But still, he's a 30-year-old man, and uh, towards the end of the movie, he's practically humping a 10-year-old girl. Yeah. Yeah, and that's not an isolated scene. Nope. (laughs) Or short. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It was weird, too, because like... I felt like a third of the way through the movie, they're like playing out outside, and he's yeah. got his goggles on, and there's yeah, like this yeah, whimsical yeah. music, and then he says he wants to show her his submarine sometime, yeah. and uh, and I was like, oh, that seems like a euphemism. Right. That would be weird. Yeah. I had no idea that 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 was coming. It was really going to go yeah, in that direction. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, there's also uh, young Jelaj Rose cooking Daddy's heroin. Yeah. 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 Uh, Making sure he doesn't burn himself to death with cigarettes. I thought right, that was yeah, a nice yeah. touch. Yeah, yeah. Trying to uh, prevent him from burning down their house by not setting his dead wife on fire. <laughs> you know, typical kid stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Making out with uh, retarded guys and uh, yeah. trying to blow up trains. Yeah. Being hunted by uh, creepy women who uh, likes to perform taxidermy on people mm-hmm. and then talking to her uh, dolls her creepy creepy headless creepy dolls doll heads. and she still has the bodies too <clears throat> yeah in like a box or something yep. yeah it's creepy too all kinds of creepy and it's not just one kind of creepy in this movie there's a whole yeah. smorgasbord of creepy if you like anything that's creepy and you're like well when they say creepy what do they mean oh no if you like anything that you describe as creepy yeah you would like this movie it's got like eight kinds of creepy and it's all, uh, yeah, all people, all characters who are basically, uh, well, I can't even say that for sure. I was going to say the non-homicidal uh, relatives of the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre family, but uh, we don't know that for sure. Uh, no, yeah. 
Yeah, there's there's plenty of corpses that yeah. with unexplained. Well, and, uh, not, not completely unexplained. But. No, but uh, still, and, and, and lots of uh, you know creepy mementos hanging from ceilings, and you know found art. Yes, yeah. uh, some air quotes there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's kind of linear. It's kind of linear. I mean, it's based on a book. Yeah, yeah. I didn't notice who it was written by. Uh, I didn't catch it. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's fairly linear. There's only one point where it jumps, and that's like uh, we see the the opening scene twice. Yeah, right. Basically. Yeah. Uh, then of course the rock club scene, which yeah, we're still not. We're sure. still figuring that one out. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I bet the book would explain that away. We should yeah. find, find oh. it at the library. Uh, go for it, because uh, I don't read anymore. Okay. I'm, uh, I believe we covered last week that uh, I'm an idiot. I, and uh, an un- unintellectual. We can expand on it. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's not a sh- open shut case. <laughs> I don't think you're an idiot. <laughs> just from last week, though. What's up? Just from last week's show, I'm I'm, uh, I'm an idiot. Oh, I'm, uh, oh, on, on last week's show or from last week? from last week's show? Yeah, uh, just yeah, my my uh, unappreciated. Oh, show. for Weathercraft. Yeah, okay, yeah. I forgot. Even I was like, what did we review last time? <laughs> I'll never forget. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got another copy in this week of Maverick so <laughs> sitting there on the shelf. Yeah, I saw. It. Yeah. Actually, I thought it might have been yours. No, <laughs> no, I'll keep mine. Right. I'll keep it. I keep it. Mm. You're known to return a book or two. I have yeah. on many occasions. Yeah. In fact, I'm sure there's some at my house now that once I read, I will return them. Yeah. But I'll keep that one. If only we all had that luxury of returning stuff you didn't want. Yeah. Well, or returning stuff that's crap. A lot of times, if it's like, if it was a, uh, uh, what's one that? Okay, like if it was Umbrella Academy, say, which right. I didn't return that one, but I'm trying to think of one that I did, like. Can't for some reason. Wolfman, yeah, Stone and Wolfman. Right. Um, I can return that because that'll probably sell. Right. But if I get something like you know Frank, Frank, or, or right. like or, you know a Chester Brown, you know masturbation book or something, right, right, right. I usually don't return those because uh, excuse me, because nobody else will read it. Nobody else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even if it sucks, you're stuck with it. Right. right. Well, sometimes I oh, give yeah. them away. Yeah, that or half price books. Mm-hmm. Because they might not take it either. I've never, I've never sold comics to first books. I usually, if I can't sell it to Mavericks, I usually just give them to somebody. Like, right. And you know, like, hey, try this. You might hate it. Right. But. Uh, hmm. Hmm. You know, we're really good reviewers. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're no, not. No, we're not. Yeah, what would, what would, if the normal couple of people were reviewing this movie, what do you, what do you think they would... What do you think they would talk about? Oh, <laughs> they they would probably have researched it. They right, they probably, probably wouldn't record this four minutes after watching the movie. Right, right. They'd probably, uh, you know, maybe uh, uh, talk in depth uh, with with detail and logic mm-hmm. about the things that they liked and disliked. Ooh, that, that's a good. Let me write that. Yeah. I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> maybe they would like. Uh, um, Maybe not uh, spoil the movie right off the bat. <laughs> not spoil it. Yeah. Uh, maybe they would reference real life cases that are have similarities that reflect the uh, yeah. you know or, psychosis or, or philosophy of the movie. Maybe even just you know uh, talk about how it made you feel emotionally. Oh, you know? did it did it do anything for you emotionally? Uh, it skewed me out. Yeah, yeah. It kind of dozed off a little bit towards the middle too. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just this time? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was uh, wide awake. Well, I was looking up by my neighbors. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, probably would uh, maybe yeah, have researched uh, the making of the movie. Talk Ooh. about that a little bit. Yeah. These are things. These are all things. Behind the scenes <laughs> things that uh, maybe affected the outcome of it. But that would just take so much more time. Yeah. yeah. I doubt it would be half as entertaining as what we do. Okay. I think I think the general consensus is that people love it when we could just go wildly off topic. Oh, really? Uh, I think so. Okay. I, I, a lot of times I'm wondering, though, you know, 
Any, anything that should we be better at this is what you you wonder. No, no, no. I was gonna say anytime like I do something creatively, you know, like and I'd say, "What do you think of this thing I did?" You right. know, usually your friends are like, "Well, you know, it was good. It was good." Right, <laughs> yeah. right. So you know, you never know. Well, I understand that, but uh, also understand that uh, Terry Gilliam isn't asking our opinion on no, this. This is true. This is true. And we can say whatever the hell we want because mm-hmm. we don't. Uh, we're not trying to maintain a friendship. Oh, no, I meant, like, you know, I'm talking about our show and, like, people liking whether we go off topic. Or oh, okay. But, but I uh, see what you're saying. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Um, well, I wish I was friends for with both. Terry. Counts for both. I would be friends with Terry Gilliam. Uh, well, I would, too. I, mean, I would be in one of his movies for free. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he would have us. No, no, probably not. Me? No. Uh, as we're not short enough to be midgets. For some reason, uh, I see him wanting a lot of midgets in his movies. Yeah, even though very few of his movies have midgets. I think uh, uh, just the one, maybe two, maybe Grim Brothers Grimm, maybe. Brothers I don't Grimm know. I don't know. I don't remember a midget in Brothers Grimm. Oh, there was one in Twelve Monkeys. Uh, was there? Yeah, uh, one on the board of people that sent Bruce Willis to the future. Okay, I think I think pretty sure. Right. I think it was even a. It may have been one of the original Munchkins from Wizard of Oz. I may just be making that up, but I'm thinking that for some reason. A female munchkin. Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, know they were in Time Bandit. Mm-hmm. Time Bandits. Now, this is not coincidence. I believe there's only one original remaining living munchkin from the Wizard of Oz, and there's also only one remaining a World War One veteran on the planet. That's a weird coincidence. It is weird. They should, they should travel across the country together and do a TV like a, show. Uh, like a film it. Um, no. no. The Munchkin could drive the whole way, because I'm sure the you know fighter pilot guy, his eyes may be a little shaky. I would say both of them. Probably. Yeah, probably. <sighs> okay, well, they could sit in the back of a limo and tell stories while, uh, with Brett Michaels' corpse, and then someone else will film it. <laughs> He's not dead yet, as, as of the recording. I don't know. I don't know about... As a, you know, as yeah. you're listening, maybe it's... <clears throat> He is a living, walking ailment, I believe. That's too bad. <laughs> I, I love the guy, like legitimately. I'm not not just as like kitsch factor. I I've always liked him. You've got a poison tattoo. I do. It's on my arm. Yep. Uh, but I've always liked I've always liked him because uh, he just seemed like a very positive guy, and he also uh, you know he has well, every rose has its thorn. That's true. Yeah. Every cowboy sings his sad. <laughs> I'll say it's sad, sad song. Actually. Right. But but he's diabetic and he's still... other like, poison lyric. <laughs> um, hop in the back. Not, no, not in the front. Hop in the back. Why? Because <laughs> there's something back there <clears throat> I want to show you. Uh, anyway, diabetic. He's diabetic and he still like tours and like does all these things. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't. Uh, I'm pretty sure not all diabetics are invalids. No, I'm just not specifically diabetes. I'm no, just saying like a lot of people when they have some sort of you know, life changing element. They're like, "Well, fuck, I'm, I'm gonna not do anything that you know might, might you know, I don't know, uh, what's the word? A- aggravate my condition or whatever." You know, I mean, he's like, he's out there like making it happen, doing his art. He doesn't care. He doesn't give a what. Uh, I don't think it's art. <laughs> oh, poison? Yeah, it's art. No. Oh, it's it's a Picasso of hair metal. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> It's it's music, for, yeah, for certain, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I don't think it's art. It's nothing but a good time. Basically, <laughs> what you're saying, yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> uh, Thailand. I, okay, I will think the the guy that played uh, uh, Dickens. What was his name? Dickens. Dickens. He's a really good actor. Yeah, yeah. I believed that he was mentally handicapped. He might be. Probably I, isn't. I actually thought that in the middle of the movie. I was like, maybe you know, who knows? Terry Gilliam's kind of strange. Maybe, right, right. maybe he just hired a guy and said, you know, like, well, yeah. say whatever you want. You know? <laughs> I think. Uh, well, uh, I think it's a little too scripted uh, yeah. for for that. Right. That's why. Uh, that's so. the conclusion I came to. And uh, I'm pretty sure that only uh, Crispin Glover hires uh, actual. Uh, uh, you know, mentally uh, challenged and physically challenged individuals to be in his uh, his performance, his masturbation movies. <laughs> and I, I don't mean that by you know he's masturbating. I just mean that in the you know the uh, figurative sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. The artistic sense. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's all Crispin Glover does. What's it called? 
Uh, what is it? Th- there's three of them. There's, I think, what is it? Uh, it is good, or something, like that, or it is fine, or something. I don't know. But I think what is it is the first one. Yeah, I've yeah. never seen them. I'm not sure uh, that I want to. I don't to. think uh, they're available anywhere. I think he's still like taking them out on the on the road by himself. So yeah, didn't he have them in, in like select theaters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, no, like he travels right. with them. Yeah, but I mean, he like get, just goes to different small right, right, art right, house yeah, theaters yeah, or yeah. something. Yeah, that's kind of a an odd gig for him to be doing. Yeah, well, it's his, it's his masturbation movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Is he in those, or did he just? Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. he's in them. He's in them. Huh? Yeah, that's a, that's a. He's an odd guy. Yeah. But, I mean, I think he might not be as odd as he comes off as, you know? Like, I think he, he's like, yeah, It's oh. on purpose. It's yeah. a manufactured. Yeah. Like, they're like, that guy from Back to the Future is a little odd. And he's like, well, I'll show them. Right. And he just ran with it over yeah. the years. Yeah. Because he was kind of odd in Back to the Future, but he was, I think that was his best performance ever as as George McFly. I mean, he didn't, like, was actually good. Well, I think his best performance was in Charlie's Angels. Who's the silent hitman? The film? <laughs> I, mean, I never saw it. Never saw it. He was good and well at heart, but he was only in it for like five seconds. But he was pretty funny. But, yeah, I'd still say George McFly. Willard, the remake? I saw about half of that movie, uh, and then I just kind of turned it off. Uh, Bartleby? Is that, is that a movie? Bartleby? Barnaby? Bar- Bartle. Barney, Barney Miller. Uh, he played Abe Vigoda in, uh, in the movie. <laughs> That would be awesome. <laughs> Just like totally recast uh, Barney Miller as for the film, like Chris Glover as Abe Vigoda's character as Fish. As uh, Fish. Um, geez, I don't know. Snoop Dogg as uh, Harris. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, Jet Li as uh, as uh, <laughs> uh, I can't remember that guy's name now. Uh, the Asian Robert. man. The Asian, Asian guy. Um, uh, Jason Statham as Woody Hoets, and who would play Barney himself? Stanley, Stanley. <laughs> I was gonna go Burt Reynolds. Yeah, but uh, Stanley is also a good one. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Uh, we'll run it. We'll run it. Uh, Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Tideland. Tideland. Is there anything else uh, you want to say about the story on this? Uh, I mean, it's just a bizarre, like, you know, sort of fantasy field love story, creepy, uh, dealing with your parents' loss sort of thing. Yeah, but, it, like, almost in... Yeah, okay, like, like I don't know if this is, you know... Story of a girl coping with this, or just ignorant of what has happened. She didn't seem to have any sort of connection or reaction to right. either of her parents' death. And is that just because of the horrible conditions that she has uh, been raised in? I mean, obviously, she has a lot of love for her dad. Yeah, but you know, is it like? Uh, like, yeah, there's something missing. Yeah. Yeah, she doesn't seem to... Uh, register. Right, she doesn't... Yeah, yeah, she doesn't register what's going on, and she doesn't sort of have any sort of, uh... Any sort of, like, complete reaction. Like, it just right. seems like... She's like, oh, okay, my parents died, blah, 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 I'm gonna go play with my toys. Right, it was, well, like, again, uh, her, her father dies, and, uh, it's not... Like, like when her mother dies, she knows she's dead. But obviously, she she also didn't much care for her mother. Right. Uh, her mother reminded me a lot of, like, two or three of my friends' mothers over the years that I've met, like, in my teens and 20s. Right. Like, exactly like that. Like that back and forth, the like crazy bipolar. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was, like, seriously... Like I could see this lady named Barb. I'm not gonna say which friend's mom it is, but but uh, do they listen? Uh, no, I hope not. I'm not. I haven't talked to this guy in forever. But it was it was like literally his mom. I was like that is so bizarre. Uh, but yeah, she 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 obviously doesn't uh, like her mom very much. So her mom dies. You know, she doesn't much care 
Like, like the only thing that she cares about is that now she gets to eat the chocolate bars. Yeah. And yeah. her mom has stashed <laughs> under the bed. Which is awesome. Yeah. But then her dad dies, and, like, she doesn't know it. Like, because like, he's on vacation. Yeah. Or, you know, nodding on heroin. Right, yeah. <laughs> and, uh... But yeah, almost uh, like each time that, that something horrific happens, uh, she, you know, uh, yeah, she just uh, runs outside and plays with the dolls. Yeah, she doesn't really deal with it, or it doesn't seem to affect her. Right. Like, even though towards the end of the movie, something happens and it's kind of chaotic and yeah. she just kind of giggles at it. Yeah, yeah. So she doesn't really learn anything from yeah, no, throughout right. the film. <laughs> kind of an unlikable character all around. Yeah, but she's adorable. And not many people will kiss a mentally handicapped person. That's true. I wouldn't. I, I'm afraid I'd catch it. Uncomfortable. This is the kind of creepy that's in the film, ladies and gentlemen. We were just trying to display it so you can know what you're in for. Um, make sure you rent it. Watch it with a friend. Have tissues and beer on hand. <laughs> You never know what you may need. <laughs> wow. I was just trying to be weird and funny. You can't always kick it up a notch. <laughs> <laughs> it is a... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> is, is that... Is that like... Say... You know, say... Hypothetically... You're... You know, you... And, and I'm asking everyone here, not just you. Um, but but you. But I'll answer, answer because I'm actually here. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm asking you as well. Um, like you're in public, and you and you see someone who's clearly not ha- mentally handicapped. You know, they're they're like, you know, I, you know, they're high operational, you know, task performing, and then they they walk up to their significant other who is clearly mentally handicapped, not just, uh, you know, um, sick or drunk or odd. Right, right. And then they start, you know, making out or or whatever. Is is it something you're like, well, good for him. He found someone, or, or are you like, do you automatically, you know, assume like, you know, the skept the skeptic nature comes in here, like someone's being taken advantage of, something odd's going on here. Like that is an odd, odd situation, isn't it? Well, first of all, if I see anyone in public making out, mentally handicapped or not, right? I'm usually sickened in general. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I don't want to see that by anyone. Fair enough. Uh, keep it in your house. Uh, but if I were to see that specific situation, uh, I think I am so cynical that I would say, ah, oh, someone's taking advantage. Yeah. Right. Because, yeah. I mean, if I saw two people, and like one, I mean, I know there's like a thousand kinds of mentally handicapped in here. Right, right. Uh, but I'm talking about, you know, like, you know, the stereotypical. Uh, right. Like retardation, you know, where you, you know someone's not quite developed enough to understand the race relationship they're in, um, like uh, Dickens. Yeah, like yeah. Dickens in the movie. But you know, if there was two people, like a guy and a girl, like that, you'd be like, "That's adorable. That's great. That's right, super right. cute." But I wonder, I wonder how like you would react if you know, like you as in just anyone, if you if you saw that, oh, like I, a, I, uh, uh, a a normie. A normie and, and, yeah, and, and a not hard. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> not uh, the preferred nomenclature. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I would. I think I would. I would. Yeah, be skeptical as well as like someone. Yeah. Like maybe if they're like, we've been married for thirty years. I'd be like, yeah. you know. And hey, if if that is that, then you know, hey, more power to you. Yeah. Awesome. Right. But yeah, I think the the cynic in me would just automatically go to you know what is in it for. You know, that yeah. person. Yeah. Right. That's interesting. Because, I mean, you know, I know... Because I there's... think even with, 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 you know, normal people, uh, I think even with that, I still kind of have, I wonder what that other person is getting. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Like, even if, yeah, everything was Like, you straight. and Kathleen, I wonder what she's getting. I, I know. You think she's pilfering my bank I, account? I think she's taking advantage of me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I hate to bring it up in this form. Yeah, it's public, public, public form, yeah, right? But right. Uh, I haven't seen my credit cards lately. Don't know where they're at. And I saw a change of address form with my name on it in her house. Don't know if that means anything. You should uh, maybe check to see if she's bought some uh, 
plane tickets recently. Oh, uh, she did. Her passport. She did mention that her her passport was being renewed. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Indeed. Hmm. I f- she, she we are on to something big here. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, yeah. yeah. Blah. Blah. Yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, if someone's like married for 30 years. Oh, and I've seen older couples where, you know, someone has suffered some sort of accident. Right, they're and, like, stroke. Yeah, right, and right, now right, their right. faculties aren't about them anymore. And, you know, and you're still like, well, that's awesome. They're sticking right. with them, you know. They're And again, kind of in this situation, like, we, we don't know for sure if he was always, you know, retarded or. Right. Yeah, you know, again, if it's due to you know them removing a chunk of his brain. Yeah, right. Yeah, which yeah. I, I would assume that's the reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah I wish they sort of would have said that though. Right, right. right. Like it's not one of those things that needs to remain ambiguous. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of like to know. Right. But, uh, but uh, and then, then obviously there's the the issue of him bringing, uh, you know, uh, himself being a. Uh, uh, a victim of pedophilia right. that is revealed yeah. in the movie. Yeah, that's creepy too. Yeah. I know, because if you think, like, if you hear the term, what do you guys think if you haven't seen the movie and you hear the term silly kissers? That sounds so funny. <laughs> silly kissers. That sounds like a pop punk band. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's fucking creepy. <laughs> when you see what the silly kissing is, yeah. you'll be creeped out. Hey, Mrs. Robinson, <laughs> lay off the retard. <laughs> that was the original lyric, but uh, Garfunkel was like, Paul, I, I think, buddy, you might want to go another route. <laughs> he was like, first of all, it doesn't rhyme. <laughs> and Garfunkel obviously had the better hair, so his opinion is what what yeah. always mattered. But in the end, uh, only one of them got Princess Leia. That's true. That is true. But he lost her. Sure, but it's also true. He's, he's like the job of the hood of the pop scene. <laughs> but he did get to hang out with Chevy Chase, so all's good. Alright, all right. it all works out. Yeah. That's the moral of this episode. <laughs> if you get to hang out with Chevy Chase, even for a minute, <laughs> things are looking up. <laughs> Take a break? Yeah, let's do that. Alright.
Hey, welcome back, everybody, to Gutter Trash. What's up? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking, I heard about another Jeff Bridges movie that just popped in my head. Yeah. Uh, have you seen Tucker? Have you ever seen that? Uh, I have not. I'd like to see that sometime, too. Yeah. I think Man it's a great dream. Idea. Yeah, I believe yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> and uh, Spielberg, maybe? Did he do uh, that? I can't remember. I cannot remember either. But uh, I'm I'm not sure. I do I do remember the movie. I do remember uh, being about a car. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, a man building a car. Right, his dream car. His dream car. Yeah, we all have one. Yeah, mine's a '67 Thunderbird. Ooh, could be wrong. <laughs> I think mine's the '29 Puget. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. <clears throat> kind of looks like the old Model T's. Okay. French version. Mine's a 94 Corsica that I wish I still had. Ooh. What's your favorite car you ever had? Was it that one? Uh, yeah. yeah. Why is that? Uh, it was bigger. It was sturdy. Uh, rode nice. Uh, had its problems, but uh, yeah, kind of wish I would have kept it. I missed my first car. And it was free. See? That's a good. That's a good uh, perk. Yeah. Of the of the of the automobile industry. Yeah. yeah. Cars used to be free. Pat and uh, kids your age, you won't remember this, but when we started driving in the nineties, cars were free. Gas was fourteen thousand dollars a gallon. Balanced out. No. My first car was a Subaru station wagon. I forget what year it was, maybe like an eighty nine or something. Mm-hmm. It was nice. It was shaped like Woody Woodpecker's head, like real low to the ground on the, in the by the right, right, right. front, and then right. like kind of way up in the air in the back. Right, right. It was nice. It wouldn't go over like forty miles an hour, forty five tops on the highway. That was the bad part. Right. My first car was a ninety two Geo Prism, white, Ooh. and uh, yeah, it was all right. And uh, my favorite thing about that was uh, I had one of those. Uh, Beaded seat covers. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's your favorite thing about the car. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, well, that, and, you know, I mean, when I'm 16, yeah, it's my car. Mm. Yeah. Right. But uh, no, then I got the, the Corsica, which which I loved, and uh, now I have a uh, 2000 Ford Focus. This is your third car? It's my third car. I'm in my fourth, buddy. Uh, oh, yeah. I go through them. I wear them out. Yeah. You know the, the Saturn's got uh, got some wear and tear. On yeah, it. it's. Yeah. I could go through a list of things that are wrong with it. <laughs> My second car, I drove so much that towards the end, it would only go forward. Yeah, you could not reverse it. Wow. So if you ever wanted to park like at a Kroger, you had to make sure you pulled through to the second space. Right, right, right. And if you were like, I'm, and we didn't have a. I lived in a house with two of my friends, and we we, we had to park on the street. Right. And so, like, if anyone ever parked behind me, I would just call in to work, like, hey, can't come to work because my parked behind me. <laughs> or parked in front of me, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, because I couldn't back, you right, couldn't back right. up to get the space. I mean, I guess I could have put it in neutral and push it, but... Right. That's, that's all work. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's crazy talk. It's weird that you've gone uh, through so many cars, and I don't think you've ever lived more than five minutes away from your uh, your job. That's true. Well, but I, I... Or your family. But I drive across the country a lot. Like, <laughs> I, I like to drive long distances when I'm not at work. It's right. weird. Like, yeah. I would, I've driven to uh, South Carolina and back, like, ten times... I've driven to Massachusetts and back, seriously, at least 25 times. Right. <laughs> it's kind of bizarre. But, uh, yeah. yeah, good times. Good times. Cars are cool. Cars are cool. I've, uh, well, I drive to Cincinnati every day, so, you know, that's that's my long-distance driving. Uh, I don't think I, uh, I don't think I ever took the course of any long trips. Uh, like Columbus, right? Since rarely, Columbus. rarely. Yeah. Uh, drove the Prism up to uh, Cleveland once. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Chris, my Corsica is uh, the one where uh, an old friend of mine set it on fire once. <laughs> really? Yeah. Purposely? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, we were we were shooting a, uh, our, our movie. 
<clears throat> and uh, we were we were doing uh, a fake trailer for for the, uh, a sequel that was never going to happen. Right. Yeah. Uh, and like part of it was like you know two of the characters were going to be standing in front of a broken down car, and uh, you know like smoke would be coming out of the hood. So somebody went out and to to Foy's and bought uh, like those uh, smoke bombs. Oh right, right. You know, and so. We thought, okay, what we'll do is we'll put the smoke bomb and like a like a like a, a tin or something like that, and just kind of set it underneath the hood and like kind of close the hood down on top of it a little bit so that like we can light it and like the smoke would pour out. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, and then like lift up the the hood and like the smoke would be you know all over. Well, the thing is that the wick on the smoke bomb set the uh, instructions on, like, you know... Uh, <laughs> the sticker. On the sticker on the inside of the hood on fire. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so we're shooting this thing. They lift up the hood. My car is on fire. And I'm just kind of saying, well, <laughs> fuck, my car is on fire. Did you stay in character? Uh, I wasn't in that scene. Uh, okay. But so we that. used my car. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. They used your car even though... Uh, I think I volunteered it, uh, oh, okay. but there was some reason why we used my car in particular. Because uh, <laughs> nobody wanted to set their car on fire. Well, other than apparently you. not, yeah. Uh, but one of my friends, uh, just, there was four of us there, three of us were freaking out because my car was on fire. Uh, the other guy just took off his shoe and just patted it out. <laughs> See? There's always going to be one clear-headed guy in every group. Yeah. Andy Miller, Miller. thank you. He was the brains. Yeah. The brains of your group. You were the muscle, obviously. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe the the wild card. Yeah, who knows? (coughs) The useless girl. You could have been the useless girl. Uh, (laughs) There we go. I was the useless girl. (laughs) (laughs) Alright, okay, so, uh, alright. Uh, so Andy was the brains, uh... Uh, Bruce was, uh, he was either the wild card or the muscle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, Rick was, uh, what was the... Good looks? Maybe. The good looks. Yeah. yeah. He was definitely the good looks. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I was the useless girl. <laughs> <laughs> See? It's, it's a formula that's tried and true. Me? As stated by the cast of, uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. No, our current group of friends, uh, we've got uh, you, me, Joe, Kathleen. Uh, I'm still the useless girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Joe's the muscle. Oh, wow, um, really? Okay. Yeah. Kathleen is, uh, she's either the uh, the brains or uh, the wild card. Okay. Which makes you the other. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I'd, I'd go with either one. I'll be brains or wild card. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you're more wild card. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. shucks. I like that. Kathleen's the brains. I'm the useless girl. Joe's the muscle. That's weird because you just said that I'm clearly not the brains, but I took it as a complete compliment. I was like, awesome. <laughs> you're like, well, <laughs> clearly. Well, because you're the wild card. Okay. So, as as we know, that's badass. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to be the wild card? It's got the word wild in your name <laughs> and your job title. If you go into a job and they're like, uh, I don't know what position you're interviewing for, but there's one that's called wild. You're like, I'm in. Yeah. Like, if it if it starts with the word wild, sign me up. I don't care if there's health insurance. <laughs> the wild card need, would need health insurance, though. Yeah, you think, but, but he's such a wild card. You don't care. You're not going to take it. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> wild card. That's such a great episode. Yeah. Now we're talking about TV shows. I'm sorry. <clears throat> no, it's fun. Always sunny in Philadelphia. Check it out. It is awesome. It is indeed. Stan DeVito. Stan DeVito. Season 5 coming out on DVD shortly. Uh, I still have yet to get the uh, the Christmas special. Ooh. Is that like a one shot? I think so. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. We're just wanting to find that. Uh, at any uh, store that sells DVDs. Okay, it's like one DVD by itself. Yeah. Extra long? Ray. Like two hours? Uh, maybe two hours. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's cool. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. We could review that as a movie. <laughs> that would be awesome. Next time I have excess money, I'm getting it. Yeah? Fuck yeah. That would be great. If it's, if it's movie like, yeah. fuck yeah. Sweet. <laughs> that would be great. Indeed. Kudos to you, sir. Kudos. Uh, yeah, I don't know. 
Anything big happening in your life? Uh, um, no. Worth talking about? Just, just doing a lot of drawing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Working. Mm -hmm. Hanging out with my lady friend. Our one year anniversary is coming up. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty excited about that. Congratulations. That's crazy. Never would have thought it would last. Yeah, year. I know. It doesn't. Uh, you didn't either? I didn't. I, <laughs> I never would have thought I would have uh, lasted Been a year again. with anyone. Yeah. She's amazing. She's, she's my special <clears throat> lady friend. She is a very nice person. Mm -hmm. And I treat you both like shit. <laughs> and I apologize. Oh, This is my one moment of sincerity. Um, really? And... It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> That's good, because that was creeping me out. I felt like I was watching Terry Gilliam uh, direct some... Sort of uh, I, need, uh, I think uh, I think I need to go out and molest a uh, retarded ten year old girl. It is Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be back in school for a whole week if you don't get them tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's creepy. <laughs> creepy film. <sighs> yeah, but fun. <laughs> it it, all, it had like a it had a like whimsical a nature? whimsical yeah, nature yeah, to yeah, the whole did. creepy. It, yeah. Maybe like if, uh, oh, what, what's the guy's name? Was it Sp Spike Jones? Not, not with a, not, not like Spike Jones of, uh, you know, uh, being John Malkovich fame, but was it Spike Jones that did all that weird music, like cartoon music in the like forties or whatever? Chuck Jones? Chuck Jones? No, I think it was. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Spike I don't know. something. I know that there are two Spike Jones out there. I, th I think this one's yeah. name was Spike Jones. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know what the other Spike Jones does. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, it would be like if he did the soundtrack to like Irreversible or something. Yeah, like it's like whimsical and fun, but this creepy thing going on. I still never seen that. I don't think I want to. Don't. Just don't. Yeah. Right. I, I, like, I know you obviously would never pick that, but I, that is, like, of the caliber of things that I would be to, I think. Like, right, I just, right. I'm just not interested. Well, yeah, like... I like art. I like things experimental and yeah. out there and unique. It, I, it, technically, it's, it's a really good movie. Technically. But just, yeah, it, uh, don't. Yeah. Don't watch it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, like, uh, I know I've, uh, I've talked about, you know, tr picking Rambo, like, you should see Rambo. I'm serious, you should see Rambo, because it's, it's awesome. Yeah. But, uh, but like, you know, you, you react to when I say that as if I'm saying, you should really see Irreversible. That ten-minute non-cut rape scene is amazing, because I am not saying that. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so either. <laughs> Sorry, no. I probably just blew out everybody's eardrums. <sighs> Problems? No. Ravioli? Backing up on Ravioli is here to stay. Uh, how was that? How was that salad? It was good. That was the best part of the meal, actually. Yeah. The salad was excellent. Whenever I order pasta from there I, and I get the salad, I always eat the salad last. Really? Because the salad is the best part. It was very filling, actually. Yeah. I love their salad. See, I would be too worried that I wouldn't be able to finish the salad if I did last. Right, Because right. it's pretty, pretty well, I'm healthy. Well, I'm a gigantic guy, and, you know, I can eat pretty much anything because I'm a gigantic fat fuck, but, you know. <laughs> also, really didn't have much to eat today at right, all, right. so, yeah. So, you're, uh, so I was super hungry right. by the time it showed up. Had a, uh, had a delivery person never had before. Mm -hmm. Some some uh, cute girl. Oh, yeah. There. A dame of skirt. Yeah. A broad. Right. And, and she brought everything correctly. Right. It's rare. But the delivery girls, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, the delivery driver probably has nothing to do with packing it, right? They just give them the package like, go, ride like the wind. Well, they have to they have to gather it up. Okay. Because the guy who usually comes and delivers for Alorus is the, the guy who's like my buddy. Yeah. The, you know, uh, yeah, he, he always forgets stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's him that forgets it, though. Yeah, okay. usually. Yeah. Because he's, uh, like, every time he'll, uh, like, you didn't, you didn't order, like, a drink today, did you? Like, no. It's like, okay, because, yeah, I didn't have one in my car and I was worried. Because <laughs> there's been, like, three or four times where I've ordered, like, a beverage and he, he, uh, he doesn't bring it. Right. How does he credit you? 
Huh? Does he credit? Oh, he'll run back down and bring it to me. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. Wow. That's uh, serious. There was, like, one time where uh, I placed an order, and I ordered, like, a two liter of, of Diet Coke or something like that, and, uh... Like, he brought me the food, and, you know, like, he left, and I just kind of realized, like, uh, like I completely forgot even, but, like, I realized, like, oh, man, I, I didn't get my drink. So I had to, uh, like, call, you know, the number and everything, and, uh, I was like, hey, I, I forgot, you know, the delivery driver forgot my drink. And I'm like, oh, well, do you want, you know, do you want us to send one out to you, or do you just want that credited? So. I'm thirsty. I want the drink. Yeah. <laughs> so like he came back out and he was like, "Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I completely forgot." It's like, dude, yeah, it's no big deal, you know. And, like I gave him like an extra dollar for coming out here on top of the That's tip cool. I already gave him. That's anyway, nice. you know? yeah. yeah. And then like for three days, like Larosa's management kept calling me, like, oh, "I understand you had a problem with our delivery driver the other day," and you know, I was like, "No, I, I didn't." <laughs> It's like, and then, like, I didn't see that guy for, like, a really long time. Yeah. I was like, oh, they didn't fire him because oh, of that, did they? Right. That would be horrible. Yeah, but... No. Over a two-liter soda. It's like, you know, I definitely wasn't upset when I called, and, like, you know, that guy is always cool whenever he uh, brings me anything. And, man, I'd feel bad if that guy got fired because of me. We should have him on the show. No. <laughs> I don't even want our friends on the show. Yeah. <laughs> We could we could all eat Larosis. <laughs> you think he's got to be sick of that thing? Yeah, probably. I mean, I worked at Olive Garden for a month, and it took me six years to go back there. I know. I know. I'm sick of reading comics. Okay. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. So the comic that I picked. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Comic time. That's cool. <laughs> I am excited. I want to read a comic. Are you sure? Yeah, I do. Because because you just said that you're sick of reading. Comics. No, no. Uh, were, I, you, were you joking? Were you making the jokes? I was being. I was making one of the funnies. <laughs> uh, it was a, one of the funnies. It was a funny. Yeah, I thought it'd be real funny there and make that funny. So this is the last episode of Good Trash, folks. <laughs> Thank what, you. Was it? What? Because because we're not going to read any more comics. Oh no no! I was making the funny when I said no, no, I was no. sick of comics. But, but that sounded like you were being really facetious when no. you were saying that you were making funny. No, no, no I was being funny. Huh. I'm always being funny. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you do want to read a comic? Then. Love it, love it. Seriously? Oh, yeah, All let's right. do it. I'm mostly stalling because I have two comics in mind, and you're still. Deciding. Still deciding. Yeah. You need a coin? I don't Ooh. think I have one. I do not have one, sir. I have a dollar bill. You want to flip that? I'll just take it. Okay. I owe you a dollar, actually. Yeah, I, don't, you do. I don't have a dollar I bill. Huh. I was lying. <laughs> Damn it. All right. Just pick one. Meeny, meeny, money, mo. Okay, took time here by its toe. If it hollers, let it go. He's meeny, really doing meeny, that. Meeny, money, mo. We are going to read. Iron Prometheus, a Lobster Johnson adventure. Ooh, sweet! Is that a mini series? Yeah. Okay. Six issues. I have the trade. Really? Lobster Johnson, Hellboy. the fan favorite Hellboy supporting character. Spinoff mini series. He was in the thumb. Was he? Nope. No. no. Rumored to be in the sequel. Rumored to be played by one Bruce Campbell. Never happened. But hey, good news, everybody! Guillermo del Toro is no longer going to be directing The Hobbit. Maybe? Maybe? Hellboy 3? Yeah. Excited if that's ever going to happen. I hope so. I hope so, so too. I love those movies. So good. I love that book. Hellboy? Hellboy. Anything Hellboy. I just... Automatic get... Hellboy postcards? Do you like Hellboy postcards? I love Hellboy postcards. Yeah. yeah. Especially Hellboy. when they are crisp and clean and have nothing on them. <laughs> it it was at one time that very way. <laughs> um, I've never I've never read any uh, Hellboy spinoffs. I've never even read BPRDs. So that's cool. You've read Hellboy though. Right? Oh yeah, I've okay, read Hellboy. Okay, right. Got a Hellboy tattoo, buddy? That doesn't mean anything. That's true. I just thought it looked cool. 
<laughs> Actually, you know what? I, I'm way more of a fan of his art than I am of like the character in the stories. Right. Like, I just love the way it looks. And I, I enjoyed the first time I read a Hellboy story, but then like every time after that, I'm like, this just reminds me a lot of the last Hellboy story. But I, I've, I've, I haven't read all of them. I've only read maybe like four different miniseries and then a couple one-shots. So. It's because you're not getting the bigger picture, it seems. There's a bigger picture. There is a bigger Ooh. picture. There's things happening. Stuff that has been built from the beginning. Oh, my God. Yeah. But we probably won't get any insight into that because we're going to be reading one of the spinoffs. Yeah. Oh, sweet. One of the incidental, doesn't really matter spinoffs. Awesome. Lobster Johnson. Lobster Johnson and the Iron Prometheus. Cool. Yes. Right here, buddy. Right here. <laughs> Can't wait. Yes. Wow, that's awesome. All right. Uh, done. I think so. All right. Go see the creepy. Go watch the creepy. The creepy, creepy, creepy. And go read Lobster Johnson. Go read Lobster Johnson and the Iron Prometheus. Or we'll probably spoil it for you. We will. Yeah. We definitely will. All right, then. Good night, everybody. Good night. Gutter Trash can be downloaded at www.guttertrash.net, iTunes, Podcast Alley, and FeedBurner. You can also find us at myspace.com slash guttertrash underscore net, seanborn.net, and buyerbewarecomics.blogspot.com. Contact us at eric at guttertrash.net or jason at guttertrash.net. Thank you for listening to Gutter Trash. We'll see you next time.